I was obsessed with the question and still am. I will never be, I will never quench my thirst for Russian history. <laughs> I love yeah. that period of 1890 to 1925. It's just okay. like, it's yeah. so fucking crazy. Like the autocracy embodied in Tsar Alexander. And then you get this like weird fail son, Nicholas, who is kind of a good guy, but also terrible. And also Russian autocracy itself is terrible. And then I just became obsessed with the question of like, why did the Bolshevik revolution succeed? Because like people in Russia didn't necessarily want Bolshevism. People suffered a lot under Bolshevism and it led to Stalinism. How did Vladimir Lenin do it, right? Like, and I became obsessed with that question. And it's still, I find it so interesting, which is that series of accidents of history, <laughs> incredible boldness by Lenin, incredible real politic, smart, unpopular decisions made by Trotsky and Stalin, and just like the arrogance of the czars and of the mm. of the Russian like autocracy and just but at the same time there's all these like cultural implications of this right in terms of like how it became hollowed out post Catherine the Great and all that I'm, I was obsessed with autoc because Russia was an actual autocracy mm -hmm. and like actually and I'm like it was there like they didn't even remove serfdom to like the civil war in America like that's crazy like you know and nobody really talks about it and I just became yeah I, I was like was Bolshevism a natural reaction to the excesses of czarism? Mm -hmm. There is a convenient explanation where that is true, but there were also a series of decisions made by Lenin and Stalin to kill many of the people in the center left and marginalize them, to, and also not to associate with the more quote unquote like uh, like amenable communists in order to make sure that their pure strain of Bolshevism was the only thing. And the reason I like that is because it comes back to a point I made it earlier. It's all about intentionality, which is that you actually can will something into existence, yes. even if people don't want it. That was the craziest thing. Like they, nobody wanted this, yeah. but it still ruled for half a century, well, more actually. I mean, almost you know, That's seventy-five years. To think that yeah. it, there could have been a history of uh, the Soviet Union that was dramatically different than uh, Leninism, Stalinism, that was completely different, like almost would be the American story. Yeah, it, it, oh, easily. I mean, there's a world where, and I don't have all the characters, there's like Kerensky, and then there was like uh, whoever Lenin's number two, Stalin's chief rival, and even, I mean, look, even a Soviet Union led by Trotsky, that's a whole other world, yeah. right? Like literally a whole other world. And yeah, it's just, I don't know, I find it so interesting. I will never not be fascinated by Russia, I uh, always will. It's funny that I get to talk to you because it's like I read this book. I forget what it's called. It won, I think it won a Pulitzer Prize. And it was like the story of, I tried to understand Russia post Crimea because I I came up amongst people who are much more like neoconservative and they're like, fuck Russia, you know, Russia is bad. Bye. And I was like, okay, like what do these people think? Mm -hmm. And we have this narrative of like the fall of the Soviet Union. And then I read this book from the perspective of Russians who lived through the fall. And they were like, this is, I was like, this is terrible. Like actually the introduction of capitalism was awful. Mm -hmm. And all, like the rise of all these crazy oligarchs. That's why Putin was came to power to, yeah. to like restore, um, restore order to yeah. the oligarchy. And he still talks to this day. Do you guys, I mean, that's always yeah. the threat <laughs> yeah. of like, do you want to return to the 90s? Right. Do you want to return to the Yeltsin? Help? Yeah. And, and like, but the thing is in the West, we have this like our own propaganda of like, no, Yeltsin was great. That was the golden age. What could have been with right. Russia? And I was like, well, what do actual Russians think? And so that, yeah, I, I, I'll always be fascinated by it. And then just like to understand the idea of feeling encircled by NATO and all of that, you have to understand like Russian defense theory all the way going back to the czars has always been defense in depth in terms of having Estonia, Lithuania and more is like protection of the heartland. I'm not justifying in this. So NATO shills like, please don't come after me. But and I'm, look, Estonian, Estonians like NATO. They want to be in NATO. So I don't want to minimize that. I'm more just saying like, I understand him and Russia much better having 
done that. And we are very incapable in America. I think this is probably because my parents are immigrants and I've traveled a lot of just putting yourself in the mind of people who aren't Western and haven't lived a history, especially our lives, of America's fucking awesome. We're the number one country in the world. Like, yeah. I'm like, we're literally better than you, like in many ways. And they, they, they can't empathize with people who have suffered so much. Yeah. And I just, yeah, it's just so interesting to me.